Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on Back in the Game, Using Technology to Safely Reopen Your Stadium. My name is Evgenia Ostrovska, and I'm Director of Business Development with Genetec, responsible for signature brands in Europe. I will be your host today. As these are extraordinary time, organizations are forced to rethink how they will plan their spaces and how they will open their doors again. Especially for public venues, things can be particularly complicated, as the venues welcome hundreds, if not thousands, of citizens in their spaces. As we plan to reopen our venues, measures need to be set in place and ensure safety for the general public. For example, how will the venue control social distancing? Any new cleaning procedures should be in place and many more questions. Here with me to share their thoughts, experiences and plans, uh, my three guests, William Hagen, manager of crowd services in the Johan Krasch Arena, Enzo Signor, who is chief marketing officer at Quanergy, and Cyril de Grief, who is managing director at ESMO. Welcome to all of you and thank you for joining us today. Before we start, here are a few housekeeping notes in order to ensure the session runs as smoothly as possible. If you're listening in, please use the email and the invitation letter to send us all of your questions uh, throughout the session. Session is going to be around 45, 50 minutes long. And after the session, we will answer all of your questions as soon as possible. We are also keen to ensure that the webinars are as informative and useful as possible. So please share your feedback. You will receive the short survey right after the webinar. Let's kick off uh, today's uh, topic. We're living in demanding times and for the stadiums it's even more so. If we're able to get back to something close to normal and as we have seen with empty stadiums over past weeks, everyone is just definitely desperate to do so. Stadiums must deliver on a full commitment uh, to keep their staff and their fans safe. We see a lot of technologies position in response to COVID-19 and it becomes harder and harder to have organization to distinguish between them, to understand what use case they solve and where the return on investment will be. There are several questions that stadium owners are wrestling with. How it can be used after COVID situation? Is it standalone solution? Should it be unified with other platforms? Is it cyber secure? And of course, before even going in uh, to choose the new technology, the main question should be, will there be internal process and resource to work with this data? If the question uh, is still something you don't have an answer to, it's probably time to regroup and start over. I'd like to start our discussion with the results of the survey from COVID-19 report done by ESMA. Let's welcome our first uh, guest. Cyril, thank you for joining. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and ESMA if uh, some of our viewers are not familiar with your organization? Yes, first of all, thank you for having me and uh, hello to everyone. I'm Cyril de Greve. I'm a managing director of ESMA, the European Stadium and Safety Management Association. We are now existing for almost 25 years um, and what we do is we try to gather all experts uh, to optimize stadium operations and everything that is linked to stadium operations. In total now we have more than 350 clubs that are part of our network um, and 70 leagues and federations. Beside that, uh, the association counts around 80 industry suppliers um, with who we try to uh, provide the best possible uh, services to to our members, uh, our clubs and stadiums. Um, and in this uh, current crisis, it's clearly uh, that we also have a role to play to inform uh, and, and provide best practices to our members uh, on how to um, organize matches behind closed doors, but also the reopening of their stadium for hopefully as many fans as possible. Um, and there are some specific tools, processes and softwares that are being tested at the moment. So we try to guide our members through this entire process. Um, what's definitely clear is that um, our members have played um, quite a crucial role in the in the last uh, couple of months. Um, both uh, our industry suppliers who came up with some innovative solutions um, and also clubs and stadiums who have turned their facilities into test centers or uh, field hospitals. So that's something very heartwarming to, to see. Um, and at this point, uh, we've reached a new phase where we want to assist and guide our members to the, the reopening of the venue. So I think this uh, webinar will be part of this uh, of this approach and this strategy. 
Great, thank you, Sylvia. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, pull up a slide uh, from your report on COVID-19. And um, uh, this is uh, about the technologies which stadiums think will play a role in the future of match day operations. Can you please give us some key findings of COVID-19 report done by your organization? What was expected? What was surprising? Uh, what were your most important findings? Yeah. Um, so first of all, in total, 38 um, clubs, stadiums and leagues federations took part of the survey. So I think it's fair to say that it draws quite a clear uh, picture on the European landscape. Uh, it's also clear that the crisis hit very hard. Uh, more than 80% of the clubs or stadiums had to uh, close down their stadium both on match and non-match days. Um, so the impact cannot be yeah, underestimated. Uh, but important to mention here is that the impact is not only um, on the current ongoing season, but it's, it will also uh, impact the upcoming years and the upcoming season as more than 90% of the participants to the survey indicated that they expected that fans will be less willing to come to the game as long as there is no vaccine. So um, a strong majority of the of the participants also uh, mentioned that they believe they will be playing in a stadium with a lower capacity or a flexible uh, capacity where they will have to adapt their um, stadium um, occupancy uh, based on the current situation uh, related to COVID-19. Um, the plan that has been developed in the meantime by, uh, for example, the German uh, DFL provided some very good and professional guidance towards a lot of clubs how to um, reopen the stadium, how to work around with uh, zoning of staff members, how to test staff. And this is also something that was part of the of the survey and the um, report that we published. When looking more specifically at match day operations and match day organization, we see that most of the clubs expect to have more needs of disinfection and intensified cleaning inside the stadium. I don't think that's a, a big surprise, but what has also been uh, supported um, by fan research, um, uh, research by fan striker amongst more than uh, 600 fans showed that fans expect to have uh, measures regarding social distancing, regarding disinfec uh, disinfections. Um, so that's something we need to take care of. Um, and one of the biggest challenges that, that clubs and stadiums are facing right now is uh, crowd management, both uh, when fans are arriving at the stadium and while uh, they are leaving. Um, the time of the game is relatively easy to organize as fans will be uh, seated inside the bowl. So as a club, you have kind of a good control where people will sit. However, when people are arriving to the stadium or leaving afterwards, there is a chance that, that people might group together. So that's something uh, that we're all looking at how we can um, try to um, try to avoid these kind of situations. And then lastly, uh, we saw that um, the ability to have uh, accurate testing and follow-up procedures uh, on, on COVID-19 cases is also something that a lot of clubs and stadiums are looking for. And there is a lot now in the market, uh, for example, thermo uh, testing. However, uh, these systems also have their limitations. There is no holy grail. So it will also uh, be up to us and, and our uh, colleagues in the market to, to check which, which kind of technologies and services uh, bring added value. Yeah, very well said. Thank you, Cyril. Um, I'd like uh, to welcome William in the discussion and uh, to see, William, uh, can you please tell us or uh, what, what is the current situation in Johan Crush Arena and uh, how you guys are approaching this? Yeah, thanks Evgenia for having me uh, on this call. Um, my name is uh, Willem Hegen and I'm uh, working as a manager crowd services at the Johan Cruyff Arena, where I'm um, actually responsible for the safety and security ticketing, arena catering and payment services departments. Um, I work also in the uh, Amsterdam Innovation Arena, where we're uh, testing and developing scalable solutions for our operation. And we're, um, we're currently uh, planning uh, towards Euro 2020 in 2021 as it's been um, uh, postponed uh, with a year. Um, but I fully agree with uh, with Cyril. Uh, in the Netherlands, we currently um, uh, have a situation which is called the one and a half meters distance uh, society um, and keeping distance in a stadium environment. I think everyone uh, can see that with masses of people 
and with new high hygiene restrictions in place will be some of the key challenges um, we are currently facing. So I think some simple challenges uh, like Cyril also mentioned uh, lie in the area of um, circulation, queue management, travel to and from the venue, um, using public space outside of the venue, the design of the seating models in stands, uh, and regulate uh, visitor flows and, ser and, and services obviously on offer. I think you have to go through all the aspects um, of your customer journey. What we are basically doing is that with um, all stakeholders involved on this customer journey, we basically look at um, where we can have impact on and where stakeholders um, have impact on. And together with all those stakeholders, we, we analyze that customer journey and um, and decide where we need to take uh, or to adapt or change our, um, uh, our operation, our regular operation to fit uh, the new situation we're in. And some of those stakeholders are the city of Amsterdam and emergency services, but uh, it's very broad and very wide. And our goal is obviously not uh, to go back to one and a half meters of distance, but to go back uh, as soon as possible uh, to normal. And that's in our case, 55,000 um, spectators. So. One of the recent steps we've actually taken is a, is a partnership with the City of Amsterdam and the Dutch Re Research Institute TNO. And the arena has in this partnership uh, been named as one of the three locations for experiments in the city to see how events can reopen again uh, and can go back to full capacity using um, technological um, uh, measures. And this is obviously mostly done for um, from an uh, um, economic perspective. In fact, that that's possible is, I think, due to the fact that we've invested a lot in um, um, innovation partnerships with, for example, the city of Amsterdam and the National Police. And that now puts us in a good spot for um, for testing several technologies. And hopefully we can go back to uh, to normal as soon as possible. So basically, I see all you're saying, it reflects that uh, the report was uh, showing exactly the challenges you were facing. So for you, like uh, the uh, for, for the stadium, it's uh, very clear that all of these findings are very actual for you. Yeah, correct. Correct. I, I, uh, I fully support what Cyril uh, just mentioned. Great, thank you, thank you. So um, we've seen technology that can help us with operational challenges such as occupancy management routes, uh, cleaning procedures like you mentioned, uh, frequency of cleaning procedures, uh, payments. So let's discuss a little bit more detail how that can help venues. Uh, what are your thoughts? So let's start with uh, William, please. Well, I think um, it's it, the basics is that um, technology should support your operation in general. So whether we are or are not in this one and a half meter distance society, um, you should look for technology that will help your operation over the long run. So sustainable um, technology um, that uh, that supports your regular operation, I think, is key. Obviously, within the current situation, we are all looking for and are being approached by many suppliers of new technology. And I think it's uh, it's the challenge over the next few weeks or so to to find out which solutions might help you. But my advice would be to use your regular technology and see if you can implement um, new technology over your existing instead of um, uh, uh, buying a lot of stuff, which will which will just be uh, helpful for the current situation we're in. Sustainable, I think, in my sense, is that is the key word um, uh, uh, for what you should do with technology. Great. Cyril, do you have any other feedback from the industry perspective? I think one of the, let's say, little positive um, effects of this crisis is that indeed a lot of technologies that were already being implemented at a slower rate, uh, pace will now be or will now have a, a faster breakthrough. So that might be a positive uh, element in the current crisis. Um, when, when looking at, uh, at, at specific technologies, I think a lot is now going on on the detection of specific fans, um, so there there will be some 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 progress to be to be made. Also, uh, avoiding physical contact, so um, cashless uh, payment, contactless ticketing, those are definitely uh, elements that will be uh, yeah more popular in the in the upcoming months. Um, and then thirdly, I think everything that has to do with crowd management, uh, knowing where your fans are, uh, at which um, yeah density that they are uh, moving around, uh, these elements will be very valuable uh, for the stadium operations side. 
But um, like Willem said, I think um, sustainability is a keyword here, and uh, we need to to make sure that if we're we, if we're investing in, in technology, it should contribute to the overall um, result of, of of your stadium operations, and it should not be just technology for the technology. It should have a clear role and a clear added value. Yeah, and maybe to add one more thing to what Cyril said, I think it's also key to understand that technology can also limit you if we uh, now invest too much. If it has to, everything what's what we're implementing now might become part of our operation, the way we organize events in the future. So also understanding that it should really contribute to getting back to normal is uh, is essential. No, it actually brings me to my next next question, uh, because we can see from the slide as well that the thermal imaging is the buzzword. So what uh, what is your opinion on that particular technology? Um, well, I, th I like I said, we're being approached by many suppliers at the moment that offer those type of services. But I'm um, a big fan of um, having a regular good technology practice uh, in place. Uh, understanding what the uh, the aim and delivery should be of technology and how it helps you. And if you integrate elements, they should fit within your regular um, um, uh, way of operating. And everything that's happening now is very based on um, on the current situation, which um, obviously I understand which why why this is happening, but um, you should not forget that um, whether you uh, should use this in the future or not. Um, it, it, yeah. Yeah, no, that's exactly that. And uh, at the Genetech, uh, our position on that is very straightforward that whatever you implement uh, today needs to be uh, useful after COVID situation. It needs to be useful long run. And uh, specifically with thermal imaging, uh, there are so many questions which we raise. First of all, cameras uh, which are normally proposed on the market, they're not medical devices. So the accuracy of uh, the temperature management is very questionable but also we have uh, so many people who are completely asymptomatic or uh, don't forget we can take a pill and the fever can go away and on another hand we can have a run or the we are a little bit in the sun and the temperature is changing so it's all about okay what is the process behind it and what are you going to do with this temperature measurement so it's it's again and again i think we repeated uh, today a lot that it needs to be very clear use case and a very clear uh, use case long run as well and uh, on on um, uh, the use cases which we believe are quite straightforward and very useful, I want to bring Enzo in the discussion. So, Enzo, could you please tell us a couple of words about Quanergy and yourself? Absolutely. Uh, thanks for inviting uh, Quanergy to this uh, very important uh, discussion uh, with our friends here. Uh, my name is Enzo Signore, and uh, I'm the Chief Marketing Officer from uh, Quanergy, uh, which is a company focus on uh, developing LiDAR-based solutions. Uh, we are headquartered in Silicon Valley in California, and uh, I'm personally a big uh, football fan, culture, uh, so I got my fix uh, this weekend of a uh, couple of games. And it's great actually to see that it, uh, the teams are playing a game, but it's honestly very sad to see that the stadiums are, are very empty. Um, and so, we have uh, a passionate uh, set of followers and fans, so uh, we, we truly need to find a solution to help enjoy the game as has been designed uh, for all of us. Um, quickly, if you're not familiar with LiDAR technology, uh, LiDAR technology is very similar to radar uh, in the way it operates, with the fundamental difference that it uses light, uh, light pulses. Um, so in a very simple term, a LiDAR sensor will emit a lot of light pulses all around itself. And when the light pulse um, hits an object, it could be a person, could be a wall, could be a vehicle, the light pulse will reflect back and come back to the sensor. And when it does, the sensor will be able to calculate how long does it take for the pulse to travel back to the sensor itself. And since the light travel at a constant speed, we can calculate the distance of that object from the sensor. Uh, we generate uh, over 1.3 million pulses per second, so we can create a very dense uh, 3D image of the world around itself. And that's the basics of how LiDAR works. Now, if you apply a software called a perception software on top of the LiDAR, then you can interpret what we're looking at. Are we looking at a person? Are we looking at uh, 
by ground? Are we looking at uh, vehicles passing by? And so with that information, we can also calculate the distance of people. Let's say the distance between, if the four of us were to be in a stadium, we can measure the distance between all of us very accurately. And we can also uh, measure the speed at which we're walking and the direction that we are taking. So all this information can be very helpful, uh, both in long term and in the short term, to develop social distancing solution. Great insight. Uh, thank you. So um, stadiums are looking for an effective way to measure and maintain social distancing or crowding. So Enzo, can you please uh, share what are the LiDAR solution can help and in what way? Absolutely. The, um, as both uh, Willem and Cyril said, there are many areas that need to be addressed today, but also has to be very sustainable uh, in the long run to make sure there is real value for, uh, for the teams and for the, for the fans. So let's take maybe a journey as we approach the stadium and see how we can address some of these issues. Uh, the first one is as we're going to the stadium, we want to pick the gate or the opening that has the shortest wait time. Right. In, in general, we don't want to waste a lot of time uh, in a queue, but more important these days, we don't want to have too much contact with potentially other people. So one thing that could be done is by putting uh, LiDAR sensors at the gates, we can calculate very precisely the number of people that are walking through and the, uh, the real time wait time at each of the gates. So that information can be posted on a website, can be posted on an app provided by the team. And so if you're a fan approaching the stadium, you can say, OK, gate number three is the shortest wait time. Let me go there. Um, the second one uh, is going through with contactless solution, as Cyril mentioned. Um, ideally, we should be eliminating any sort of barriers that are creating a backup of people as we walk through the, uh, the stadium. But it will be highly uh, accurate. Otherwise, clearly we're missing the whole point. So what you can do, you can use the same LiDAR sensor that I mentioned earlier. And it can count the number of people, so you can actually use that in addition with other technology to do a contactless check-in and contacting, measuring people, counting people, as well as uh, uh, checking in fans into the stadium. When you go into the stadium, typically you have uh, a corridor, right, or multiple corridors to bring you to your seat or maybe bring you to the common areas, like restaurants or restrooms and so on. That's a critical Right now, because the high people are mingling, uh, they're looking for their seat, and the social distancing is very, very important. So, what you can do, you can use LiDAR with perception software again that can measure the exact distance between people, and that information can be displayed on a TV monitor. Uh, you can raise an alarm, like a sound or a visual alarm, if people are lingering too close to each other. For instance, you can come up with a business rule that says if I have three people closer than one and a half meter for longer than 10 seconds, then I can raise a visual alarm. And so people will monitor that and say, okay, I need to distance myself. Or you can have that information going to a facility manager or some sort of security personnel that can identify areas where there's a high congregation of people and break them up. Uh, finally, when you're going to a common area, think about a restaurant or a restrooms, where people tend to gravitate all together, right? Because maybe during half time, people are going to go get the coffee or uh, take a break. Then you want to count how many people are in this common area. And so let's say you have a typical capacity of 100 people. Maybe you are running maybe at 20%. So you want to count and maybe maximum is 20 people can be in this common area. So you can count automatically the number of people and put a sign, electronic sign outside of the area and says, stop, you have reached capacity, let's wait until the next time. And that information can also be shared on an app as well, so people don't have to figure it out in real time, but they can, in, uh, they can understand when is the right time to go to a common area. Yeah, correct. Uh, we also, like uh, with the solutions together with Quanergy, we find it's very useful to have a dashboard uh, visualization. So, because obviously uh, when you have people next to each other, it's... Um, not really uh, process-wise easy to uh, kind of uh, make them go away from one another. However, if you see the um, 
the trend of people respecting or not respecting the social distancing. This is something you can regulate with the digital signature, with uh, people on the floor and so on. So that leads me to the next question. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about how the solutions which are very important to implement today for the COVID situation can be used after COVID? Absolutely. By the way, we've been working with a lot of uh, uh, football teams uh, prior to this, uh, prior to the situation, to provide security solutions because um, one of the biggest issues that we see is, um, you know, I've been in uh, uh, a number of uh, games in Italy where there was a lot of, you know, unruly fans, and so it's, you know, it could be a scary moment for uh, for the fans. So number one objective is security, right? Providing a very safe experience for the fans. And uh, the same technology we're talking about today can be used to actually help with security because we can track individuals, uh, we can track the movement, we can track the density of people in a public space. So, for instance, uh, as you know, sometimes there is a fight ensuing somewhere, maybe around the perimeter or inside the stadium. And typically, there is clearly a number of people together. So, you can see the density of people, first of all. Second, you can see the speed if they're running. Um, and in which direction are going, there could be an indicator that there could be a fight ensuing. And so you can actually, with integration with Genetech, for instance, uh, with the security center, we can now point camera to that group and increase the level of security and be able to point the police or, or, or uh, safety or a guards to break up that fight and be able to provide a very safe environment. Um, the same uh, technology can be used for also for footfall management. Let's say you have a retail area, for instance, and uh, you can now actually track the, the flow of people going from the stands to maybe the gift shop or to the restaurant or anytime where there is a uh, retail area in the stadium itself. And so you can use it for marketing purposes. Uh, you can use it to increase revenue and you can include you can use it to uh, to provide a better experience to all the fans. So the same identical infrastructure can be repurposed for those more long term use cases. Yeah, and, and this is a this is a great point uh, that uh, this uh, security platform is historically taking as the security feature of the stadium. However, it's not anymore. If you have technologies, we can use the cameras we see uh, our customers, our fans, why don't we understand uh, the behavior to improve uh, the experience of the people within the stadium. So like you said, the stakeholder is not only security department, it's operations, it's a marketing department, and they just need to make sure that they know about the technologies in place and they can leverage on existing infrastructure. A lot of uh, situation when um, marketing department brings another use case and uh, there is a standalone parallel system installed in pretty much doing the same like a security system. And this is something we need to avoid and collaboration between different departments these days is extremely important. Um, and uh, we see that this is a trend uh, of changing the collaborating. And um, on this note, I actually wanted to mention another thing, which is bringing us to IT department of the stadium. And um, th uh, thank you, Enzo, for your input. And um, I just wanted to raise the question of the cyber security. Uh, working at Genetech, um, I see that there are a lot of areas of vulnerabilities and physical security solutions. And now adding new solution, new IP device, new software on the network, it can bring additional threat to cybersecurity of the stadium. As an example, in 2018, the opening of the Winter uh, Olympics uh, stalled due to cybersecurity attack and uh, temporarily paralyzed the technological systems. Uh, displays monitor failed, the stadium's Wi Fi vanished into thin air, and the website uh, interception prevented potential attendees from printing out tickets from the official website. In 2012, it was another example, evidence of a planned uh, cyber attack was discovered in conjunction with uh, the London, uh, London Games. So at Genetech, we believe that cybersecurity is uh, mostly about testing and uh, the speed of reaction. It's uh, more about process uh, than anything else. Um, 
what what I mean by that is cybersecurity. It's not a feature. It's not a checkbox you can just uh, just have. Uh, it unfortunately you cannot never write the software which is uh, which doesn't have any potential vulnerabilities. But what you can do, you can establish a process. Uh, it's um, a process and openness, uh, timely delivery of information to all possible affected parties and timely fixes. Um, William, uh, Cyril, what are your approach to cyber cybersecurity? William, maybe you can share with us uh, the position from the stadium perspective. Yeah, I'm ov obviously not from the IT department, but I can share um, um, that uh, cybersecurity is a very essential uh, part of our operation. It's becoming it has become more uh, increasingly uh, important uh, in terms of our operation. I think like anything um, uh, in the way of, uh, in terms of, uh, I, I guess, good practice, you should always assess your uh, your key risks associated to your business and your and the organization of events. And with obviously the increased amount of technology that's being used to run events, and that's, that's essential for safety and security operations, um, I think a good uh, risk management strategy on cybersecurity should be in place, and um, that's an ongoing process which includes regular pen tests and 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 basically um, it's it's a, it's a key part of your whole operation. Without this, um, uh, there's high high risk involved that events um, um, uh, basically um, um, find uh, issues uh, when they uh, when they happen and. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, that's what we don't want to happen. Absolutely, and it's also like reputation is on the stake in this case. Cyril, from the industry perspective, you, just, uh, you see the same trend? Yeah, exactly. I think the, the importance of cybersecurity cannot be uh, underestimated. Uh, and within our industry, we're often talking about uh, the connected stadium. It's kind of a, of a buzzword, um, but it's clearly the way forward. More and more uh, processes are being um, let's say, organized up on the, the technology layer at the stadiums. Um, so we're getting more and more connected, not only uh, for fan experience, uh, but also for operations, for example, um, access control or cashless payment systems. But that means that we're also becoming more and more vulnerable, vulnerable sorry, and that um, yeah, there, there are more risks. Um, so we need to, to be aware of that and, and organize us ourselves in, in that way as well. And then secondly, we're um, having more and, and gathering more and more data from visitors and fans at the stadium. We need this data. It's very important to have it to provide the best possible experience and having a, a very personalized um, offer. However, we also have a responsibility to, to make sure that this data is being protected. Um, so this is uh, yeah, a responsibility from, from our industry and we shouldn't underestimate this, uh, this uh, responsibility. Percent. Thank you. Well, time flies, so we're slowly going to the end of our webinars. And uh, thank you, uh, all of you, for your great insights. Um, I believe that uh, what we discussed today uh, can be uh, summarized in a few key uh, takeaways. And I think the first thing which we definitely agree on is that every technology should uh, have a clear use case and clear return on investment. Another thing which uh, I believe we all talked about is that choice of technology uh, should be not only for the COVID operations, but a rather long run with a potential application during COVID. Uh, with uh, these measures, which are um, changing daily, it uh, can be very difficult to invest in technology which can be not even in place uh, tomorrow. Another point uh, is that don't forget about cybersecurity, uh, choosing the technology, cybersecurity, and the process of in the manufacturers around cybersecurity should be considered very seriously. And um, another point uh, which we uh, touched upon is don't choose the standalone application. Uh, the more unified, integrated the data inputs you have, the better, simply because you can reuse it in many different ways and uh, it can be reused by many different stakeholders. So standalone operations, it's a little bit uh, um, problematic in terms of it's uh, less usage, less stakeholders, 
uh, more maintenance and administration and so on. So that also, I believe, should be uh, considered as uh, the part of the choice. And I think we all agree on that. So based on this summary, I think that um, many of the people in our audience are asking themselves questions like, what do I do first? And uh, what questions should I focus on answering? So may I ask our guest uh, to give this uh, advice for the first step uh, towards better operations uh, in COVID and after COVID. So, William, I will uh, start with you. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, I think the key is obviously to have a good strategy in place. Is what you basically mentioned, what we discussed, um, is, is you're absolutely right. I think uh, you should have a good strategy how technology should help your operation. Um, but I think uh, um, it should always be part of a bigger plan. So um, um, uh, look at your operation, look at who you're working with and, 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 and what stakeholders can, uh, uh, um, can help you with um, during the operation. Um, but um, yeah, invest in technology that helps you in the long run and not just the short run. Thank you, William. And Cyril, from the industry perspective, uh, any advice from you? I think it's important to, to really know and define what your needs and demands are and therefore also work from a bottom-up um, approach. Uh, one of the examples that we heard uh, throughout the past couple of weeks was that, uh, for example, one of the venues, they asked every steward to list up which were the physical contact points between a steward and a fan. And as a, as a director or uh, someone who is, who is in charge of the overall strategy, they're not already, always aware of these individual um, feedback of, of people. So it's important to get all this input in and based on that, uh, make sure that you are involving the different departments within your club, but also like Willem uh, mentioned in the beginning of the, of the webinar, make sure to involve and align all the stakeholders like uh, the city, uh, the fans to come up with a, with a strategy that, that really includes all the, all the different stakeholders. And then lastly, uh, try to avoid to have technology just because you can say that you have this uh, technology available. It's not because a lot of, of uh, people or organizations are talking about thermal uh, CCTV that everyone should have it. There should be a, a real business case behind it with, with proven uh, track records before um, doing these investments. So that's, that's a, a, a last advice that I would like to, to share. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you. And Enzo, from the manufacturer, uh, anything different you can add? No, I agree with uh, all my colleagues. And uh, in general, I would urge uh, all of us to take the situation very seriously. Um, we, uh, we are here in the US and we see numbers actually increasing. Uh, so we don't have to take, we cannot take the, um, the eyes off the ball, uh, so to speak. So we do make sure we stay on top. And it's all about our, uh, how we manage risk at the end of the day, right? If we're not going to be able to reduce the risk to zero, but how do we detect and how to manage the risk is what's going to be important for the next, for the near future. And um, technology is important um, to the extent it can automate complex processes that cannot be done effectively by, by people. So we have to pick the right technology based on the right use case. And I totally agree with, um, uh, with Cyril about this. And we need to think about the long term, just uh, like William said, is uh, buying technology for the next uh, foreseeable future you know, could feel good, but um, if there's not a stronger eye, uh, it's not going to be able to provide the value that the, the teams are looking for. So absolutely look both at the short term and the long term, how you can use the technology. And uh, very important also, um, protect fans' privacy as much as possible. Um, they're there to enjoy the game, they're there to, uh, to have a great experience, and so we don't want to impact the privacy of the, um, of the individuals. Yeah, very, very good addition. Yeah, GDPR is uh, our one of uh, our main topics uh, when we choose any system and any new system. Obviously, we also need to consider that aspect as well. Well, unfortunately, time is, uh, has flown very fast and uh, we're in the end of um, our webinar. Please, everyone who is listening in, if you have any questions, just send it to us. We will be really happy to answer. We will be really happy to connect you with Enzo uh, in terms of you have questions on the LiDAR technology. And of course, uh, our guests will be ready to answer anything uh, you are, uh, have outstanding. Thank you and have a great day, everyone. And thank you to my guests. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone.